Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. Good morning. This is Sanjay Ture, and welcome back to another episode of the Women in Technology series. And I'm joined in the station here with Penny Collins and Robin Lloyd. I'm so excited to speak to you and hear your story and all, hear all the amazing things that you do here Thank in you. Atlanta. All right. So I'm going to start with you, Penny Collins. And um, I just want to hear what you're up to right now. Yeah, so since the last time I was here, um, the last time I talked about the WIT Connect event and everything yes. we're doing to get organized for that. So we are up to the minute of actually having this big event. It is going to be June 20th. It'll be at the Georgia Aquarium um, where we have um, our VIP reception that is sponsored by State Farm, who is one of our biggest, biggest supporters in women in technology. And I'm thrilled that they're here today. It's just so thrilled to be working with these guys and just wait until you hear the amazing things they're doing. Yeah. But they're sponsoring our big VIP event from six to seven o'clock. And then the doors open at seven where we have a wonderful evening of dinner, um, networking with all of these 800 leaders from across wow. Atlanta and Georgia that will be lot. there a lot. And then it's a night for... Wit showing us in action yeah. is where we will give out over $160,000 in scholarships to college and high school girls and for us to be able to celebrate them and the great work that they're doing and their STEAM-related activities. So we're thrilled with that. It's also really great because we are almost sold out. We literally have only six seats, individual seats available for the whole event. So we're very, very excited about that. So we've been focused on that. We've been focused on kicking off our Women of the Year event, which will be in November. Um, we've already sold um, a quarter of our tables for that, wow. so we're doing great. And really looking at, um, you know, what are we going to do when the kids get back into school and we're ready to relaunch our programs? Yep. And really focused on strategy around um, what we can do to further support all of our girls and our women. And, so, feel, and make them feel integrated. Absolutely. So a lot of great stuff happening. Very busy, and it's a, it's a good busy. So... Very, very happy yeah. to be here. And I'm super excited because Business Radio X is going to be there. They will. And I am thrilled. So they, for everyone listening, uh, you guys will be broadcasting live. Yes. And also you will be helping us in the script as well. I will. Um, so I'm very, very excited to again have you guys there as our partners. And thank you so much for being here today. You bet. And we will be talking to Robin Lloyd. Are you excited to be here today? I'm very excited to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. And I'm looking forward to sharing all the, the cool things that we do at State Farm around STEAM as well. So you are the technology manager at the and the data an analytics. I can explain that a yes, little better. Please. <laughs> yeah, so at State Farm, we're a really large organization, and yeah. we have an enterprise technology department, which is pretty large in and of itself. And so um, I am a technology manager, and I lead a team that right now is focused on claims analytic data management. So we are focused on taking all of our claims data and deriving information from it. That's awesome. That seems like you're doing a lot for the company. Yeah, it's a very exciting place to be right now. Um, the future of technology is really um, hitting big data a lot. And so big data analytics is definitely a really cool place to be in the enterprise right now. All right. So we're in Georgia right now, and you haven't always been in Georgia. You started off in Illinois. That's correct. State Form Corporate Headquarters is in Bloomington, Illinois, and I grew up in central Illinois. Um and worked at corporate headquarters for 14 years. And then five years ago, State Farm made a decision to diversify our workforce. And one of the strategies was to open IT hubs mm. in three other major cities. So we opened an IT hub in Dallas, Phoenix, and Atlanta. And so five years ago, I was one of the first six people to relocate to Atlanta to seed our IT department in Atlanta, and 50% of my time was spent recruiting and partnering with professional organizations in Atlanta. And how do you like Atlanta so far? I love it. Yeah? Yeah, I'm kind of a city girl at heart. I w initially went to school in Chicago, and Central Illinois is a okay. wonderful community to raise a family, but it is surrounded by plains and corn and beans. <laughs> and so I was definitely ready for the change in geography. Um, the winters can be pretty harsh in Illinois, and so... Um, even though Atlanta summers are pretty hot, so were Illinois summers, so that's mm. not changed a lot. Right. And I really do love the springs here. Oh my goodness, the yeah. flowers and the foliage. And we're we're close to everything. So And the people here are amazing. Since I've moved here, I've noticed that everyone's just so sweet and the southern hospitality is actually a real thing. 
it is a real thing. Yeah. So tell me about how you worked as a COBOL developer 18 years ago. Okay, so 18 years ago, I started with a state farm as a COBOL developer. And 18 years ago, it was right on the cusp of the Y2K event, a crisis. I'm not sure mm. what we call that at this point. But for anyone out there listening who wasn't even born before the year 2000, yes. <laughs> you should know that you know there was a real concern at that time that technology would not be able to tra- transition from the year 1990 to the year 2000. And why is that? I don't know. Yeah. Don't ask me. There was a technology, and if it would roll over into – Penny, do you know some of I that I do. History? So a lot of the systems were more focused on the, like the 19 19- – um, kind of um, coding. Oh, okay. And so going to 2000, it was mm-hmm. it was kind of how is that going to actually transition, and yeah. how are systems going to be able to in you know keep running? Mm-hmm. So a lot of work had to go into updating the code, updating the systems to yeah. make sure that it was compatible. Correct. It's interesting. So at that time, companies were really scaven. They were really in need of mainframe developers because that's what Codeball is. It's a mainframe programming language, and so State Farm was. In such a desperate need that they partnered with the um, Illinois State University, which is also located in Bloomington Normal, mm. Illinois, and set up a program where they would train people to learn COBOL. So they gave they sent out this mass request, and people would apply, and they would give you an aptitude test. And if you had an aptitude for computer programming, then they would interview you. And I was selected through that process. Wow. And it was kind of life-changing for me, in fact. And the the course was called Infotech. We went through 13 weeks of vigorous training on COBOL. And um, that's how my career started at State Farm. Wow. And COBOL stands for Common Business Oriented Language, right? Yes. So um, do you think that they're still teaching that in universities today? I don't think they are teaching COBOL It's a little anymore. outdated, huh? It is outdated, but... Still heavily used. We still yeah. actually use COBOL at State Farm. So large companies um, relied heavily on mainframe because they could scale. And okay. so State Farm is huge. And so mainframe systems actually work really well with large scale operations. Mm. So we still actually have some mainframe operations going on in the background. So batch processing. Yeah. Um, if you think about the number of um, Claims that State Farm process policyholders, millions and millions of claims and millions and millions of policyholders. That's a lot of data, yeah. and it runs through um, mainframe systems. You know, it's interesting um, that, I, that I think we – back to your question about, you know, are, are people being taught this? Yes. And I think the answer is no, but they should be. Because, because it's almost of a foundation, right? Well, it's almost like old technology is not going to go away, mm. especially when you're looking at our mainframe systems, right? Mainframe that handle big batch processing, yeah. they're heavy, heavy, heavy machines, right? Yeah. And cobalt will always be there um, in some form or fashion in these mainframe systems. So it almost becomes one of those needs for some of our young talent to not right. only new, learn some of the new but it's so valuable to also make sure you have a heartbeat yeah. on the old because the old to actually get rid of the old is costly mm. and it's timely. And so a lot of it will still stay around and sometimes not as efficient. So mm. absolutely. Um, we definitely still have COBOL developers around at state farm. Yeah. And I joke that in my retirement being a part-time COBOL developer, I would gladly do that again. I mean, yeah. the pay would be amazing. And if I could do it part-time, from home, that would be awesome. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. So maintaining that skill set, COBOL actually was my favorite language. Since then, really? I've learned VB and Java and, and several other object-oriented languages and some scripting. But yeah, COBOL, I could do that all day long. So do you feel like individuals that have a background in COBOL are a little bit more, they have a little bit more of an advantage over those that don't? Not necessarily, okay. um, because lots of things today in web development, in UX development, all those modern languages are helping um, move that forward. However, mainframe applications will still be there. So I don't know if it's necessarily that they're disadvantaged if they don't have COBOL. I think companies will start to become disadvantages, disadvantaged as that workforce ages, yeah. so those mainframe developers as they age. Um, I think a lot of that is probably being served by outsourcing as mm. well. So as that need grows, then outsourcing that skill set will probably become more prevalent. So how did having this background shape your career in the enterprise technology field? 
Well, it was essential for me to get my foot in the door and to help Mm -hmm. State Farm move forward in their specific need. But at the same time, technology was changing so much. It was only two years later that I immediately went to Visual Basic training and started learning um, how to develop on our web applications. Okay. So it it was that was really fast. So sixteen years ago, we were already pivoting to the new technology. Yeah. And so after we had made sure everything was stable with Y2K, then we were moving on to advanced test technologies. So what role is State Farm playing in driving the state of technology and innovation in Atlanta? Well, I think one of the things that we're doing is we're really trying to partner heavily with universities and organizations and communities mm-hmm. to ensure that we are building a workforce that's rich and diverse um, and one of the things that I've been focusing a lot on in the last five years is ensuring that we're focusing on educating people about the option of technology. So I think the earlier that you learn that technology careers are an option, then the more interested you might be in pursuing those kinds of careers once you get to higher levels of education. Okay, so walk me through your position right now at State Farm. What do you do on a daily basis? Right now, I have a team of eight, and my team is heavily involved with setting up a new infrastructure for our claims analytic data. And so we are providing a service of providing analytic data to our customers. And our customers within our technology team are our other business uh, partners within State Farm. So other technology teams and business partners within State Farm. So we're not customer facing, but we're providing analytic data to the business in general to make business decisions. Yeah. So my team meets daily. We work on a an Agile Scrum um, platform, and so we have daily Scrum meetings. I'm considered the product manager along with the technology manager, and so we make prioritize what work's going to be done during the day, and we talk about what everyone's working on, and then if there are roadblocks that are keeping us from getting work done, then we try to address those so that people can – can work through that. It's pretty exciting around yeah. there right now. Yeah. So we're doing some major um, changes at State Farm. And so we're on the cusp of some new technologies and it's been a lot of fun. So you're here to build a brand at State Farm and you're also recruiting new talent. How's that going for you? Well, that's good. So five years ago when I moved here, I partnered, my specific uh, role was to partner with UGA and Women in Technology, AITP and some other organizations, uh, Georgia State, mm-hmm. University of Florida, and we would go out and specifically target um, recruiting at those universities, working with their professors and helping influence their curriculum so that mm-hmm. they were making sure that they were teaching their students things that they would actually be able to use in the workforce. So um, that's been very exciting, partnering with all of those groups yeah. to influence that. And then building this relationship like with WIT. Um, five years ago, I just kind of took a stab. TAG was great in helping us kind of get started as well. And so they said, oh, you probably want to be involved with WIT. And so five years ago, as of yesterday, I attended my first WIT Connect meeting or event. And it was one of those things where I bought one of those last single tickets um, because it was – I'd only been here for a few weeks. Yeah. And went in there kind of crazy, scared by myself, not knowing what to expect. And it was wonderful. Yeah. Number one, I – you know – Georgia people are amazingly nice yes, and kind. And fact. so I want to give a shout out to Pyramid Consulting because they took me under that their wing that night and I didn't have to sit by myself at one of those tables in the back. Yeah, They invited me to sit at one of their front tables. And so I got to enjoy the evening with them. And that's really sweet. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm aware that you're also trying to be inclusive and have diversity within just recruiting people for your company right now. Correct. It's very important. One of our missions is to diversify our workforce. We want to be really rich in a diverse, in many ways, like in culture and uh, community service. So we've been partnering with all these organizations so that we can pull in a a diverse workforce. When we were in Bloomington at State Farm, Mm -hmm. recruiting to that central Illinois location, building that diverse pool was more difficult. Yeah. But now that we're in these major cities, we have a bigger advantage at recruiting some of these people. And it's very important to us to align with organizations mm-hmm. and with people and with groups like WIT to ensure that we're building a diverse workforce. 
That's amazing. So um, you participate in a lot of human um, resource groups or employee resource groups, right? I do. Can you tell me a little bit about that? At State Farm, we have over 40 employee resource groups. And really, they're just a – they're communities within State Farm that have a unique um, – a bonding community. We have Asianet. We have Pride. We have Women in Technology. Um, There are numerous other groups as well. Hispanic Employee Resource Group, so that's called HERO. And I was the lead of the Pride ERG for two years. And so ERGs are kind of close to my heart. I I find a great deal of community and camaraderie within those groups where you get to share with other people. And it's very important to State Farm to make sure that we are building a workplace where you can be their authentic self. Mm. And so building that community has been really good too. And just a little bit about you. Tell me your history. How did you really get into tech? I feel like, is it something that you always wanted to do or is it something that you started getting into high school and someone persuaded you like what what happened well i have a pretty unique background yeah. i didn't start out in the traditional sense of going to college and get, getting a computer science okay. degree i actually started out at depaul university in chicago as a psychology major wow and then a year and a half in i met the love of my life i thought at 19 <laughs> and <laughs> Decided to take a little bit of a pause and get married, yes. and we had a beautiful baby. Unfortunately, that marriage did not work out. And as I became a single mother, I realized that the uh, the the job that I was working, where that was paying me ten dollars an hour, was really mm. not going to sustain me as yes. a single parent in the fashion that I was expecting to live. So I did a lot of research Mm -hmm. and tried to decide if I was going to go back to school and continue to pursue that psychology degree, or I was also interested in journalism. Um, But my research really uncovered that I should either, from an economic standpoint, go into IT or nursing. And then when I further broke that down, I realized that I didn't really want to work nights and weekends. Yeah. So I focused on IT. It was a really dis- smart decision for me. I went back to school and only um, I only have an associate's degree in computer information systems. Oh, okay. But I've actually taken that ac- that course, that degree exposed me to a ton of different coding language. It was a real mm. deep dive into actual software development. So I was really prepared. And then when State Farm opened up that opportunity with Infotech, and then they put me through that 13-week program, yeah. it was a perfect match. Right. So and I loved was, it. I was, yeah, I'd taken three semesters of COBOL before I even took that aptitude test. Yeah. And so I was really prepared. Did you have any mentors? I had lots of mentors along the way. Um, at work, State Farm is pretty rich in mentorship. We, we can formalize mentorship or informal mentorship. And I learned pretty early that if I wanted to advance my career, then I needed to drive that myself. So I've always been pretty good about reaching out and using my network. So as I might, would meet one person, they would introduce me to another person. I would always became very active. So okay. like with the ERG groups, I've always been trying to do more at work because that really builds your network. When you're reaching out to other people, yeah. reaching out to other groups, you meet other people and it becomes pretty influential. Oh, I know Mike. Mike and I worked on this or, oh, we were, you know, so it really, really helps advance your career. And you just get a really rich, diverse um, background Mm -hmm. of information because now when I, I'm really a new manager, I've only been a manager for four years at State Farm and every once in a while I'll come across a situation and I'm not sure exactly how to handle it, but I know that I could call Barb and say, hey, this person just said this to me. Now what do I do? And so I have lots of people, and I know what their strengths are, too. So there are different people that I go to for different things. And do you mentor some people right now? I do. Um, That's one of my favorite things about work is developing other people and seeing Mm. other people advance and grow. I'm really enjoying where my career is right now, and I don't foresee me going any further because I really, really like being close to the work. Yeah. Um, But there are other people that I can see true leadership skills, like who could really lead State Farm in, in, in awesome ways. And I... I love seeing those people advance and helping them advance, helping build their network. It's giving fulfilling, them, huh? giving, It is. It's very fulfilling. Giving them feedback. Um, I like to be transparent. So if I see you do something that I think is probably not going to work real well yeah. for you, I'll probably take you aside and say, hey, you might want to try this instead. So I like doing that. So what's the best piece of advice you have been given so far in your career? To... Be confident Mm. in yourself. Even if you don't think you can do it, say yes and try it. 
So I have made a career out of saying yes to things that I pretty much knew I didn't know how to do. Yeah. But I am pretty confident that I can figure out just about anything and make it work. I'm also pretty good about failing fast. So mm. if I screw something up, I'll admit it and try something different. So tech is definitely a male dominated field right now. Did you ever feel insecure or just like you didn't fit when you began tech? Oh, yeah. So 18 years ago when I started, it was all men. Yeah. I mean, it was 99% of the time I was the only girl in the room. And it wasn't just my peers. It wasn't just other software developers or technology people. It was also leadership. Yeah. It was very male dominated. Um, so I really didn't see people like myself in leadership. And to be honest, I didn't even consider leadership probably heavily influenced by that for about six or seven years before mm -hmm. I realized, oh, I could probably be a manager myself. And so because there just weren't any any women in leadership, very few. That's least. why it's so important to have people like you and Penny Collins to really give people or just young women something that something we can look up to. Correct. You know. And I've watched that landscape change drastically at State Farm, especially over the last 10 years, um, and even more so in the last five since we've branched out to the mm -hmm. hubs. Um, right now, uh, State Farm is the – we do have the – in 2018, we were called one of the top five companies for women in, women technologists by Anita oh. B. Organization. We are also, in 2018, were one of the top companies of executive women. So the National Association of Female Executives also noted that State Farm – so we have – I have seen female leaders um, right now in enterprise technology. There are three um, executives and two of them are women. That is really, um, that's a huge change yeah. from when I first started. That's awesome. So what's some piece of advice that you would like to give to women that want to be in this business? Women that I, I want you to consider that um, technology is changing and a lot of technology is changing towards um, an acute awareness of human behavior. Mm. So that psychology degree that I gave up back in 1988 is probably something I should, I mean, I had already gone down that path, Yeah. but I highly recommend psychology being something that you consider as a minor or it's just human behavior drives yeah. technology and it will even more in the future. And so having that psychology background and that understanding of human behavior will be um, extremely important in the future. And also, sometimes I think women can be intimidated by technology. Mm. So I don't really want to sit down and heads down, co you know, develop in Kobo my whole yeah. life. And I'm not really either. I'm an, ex I'm an extrovert. I'm a people person. I yep. like to talk. I can't sit and develop for eight Too hours long. a day. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't. But I can. And it gave, it gave me a great base to lead other software developers. Yeah. I understand technology from a high level, but I put two good years in at being a software developer. And then it took me anywhere else I wanted to go um, in the organization. So I started leading teams, coordinating work, ultimately became a project manager. So it, software development is really just the entryway into a wonderful career it's in technology and especially at State Farm. Yeah. So um, it's really just the entry level job. There are people who love to do heads down code yeah. development. And I know lots That's of women. <laughs> I know lots of women who like to do heads down code development. I'm not one of them. Right. So you can always do that if that's the career you want and you can become an engineer or an architect. But but for me, I needed a little bit more people involvement. Yeah. Yeah. Are you impressed by the upcoming individuals that are going into tech, like the students that you deal with at GSU and um, Georgia State, like um, what, what's the technology? UGA. UGA, I'm sorry. Georgia Tech. <laughs> Georgia Tech. I am so impressed, yeah. Sanjay. I'm telling you what, they have been such an injection mm -hmm. of vitality, excitement, and passion um, to our workforce. I so I'm just going to say it. So working with the millennials has been the highlight of my career. Really? Yeah. That, so we People hired, usually say the opposite. No, <laughs> I absolutely love it. Yeah. We, I, well, I've had a unique opportunity. We've prob I've probably individually been a part of the hiring of 
probably about 200 millennials wow. over the last five years. And I tell you what, I love them to death. They're passionate. They're excited. Yeah. They motivate me. They bring positivity to our work environment. They bring new ideas. I really love it. Are they teaching you new things? Oh, they are teaching me new things left and right. And so that's a mentorship thing. So that yeah. upward mentorship, you know, that happens a lot these days. So, you know, I, I know that they have skills and things that I don't have, and I am more than willing to learn from them. So that reverse mentorship thing is happening all yeah. over the place at State Farm, even with executives. You know, an executive, he hears the word, he hears the word blockchain. Mm -hmm. Well, he doesn't know anything about blockchain. So you'll have somebody else mentoring that executive on what blockchain really is and right. what it's going to do at State Farm. So happens both so ways. So you are the director of operations at the, Lo the Lloyd household. Tell I me am. about that. So director of operations at the Lloyd household means that I maintain the calendar. Yeah. I make all the doctor's appointments. Yeah. I make sure that usually the refrigerator has food for everyone to eat and, um, People get homework done and that their clothes are ready for work on Monday morning. So it's really <laughs> – I don't do all that work. I just make sure that it all gets done. So I, I want to give my husband credit. He's an awesome partner and he, he does all the laundry at our house, I have okay. to confess. Um, but I do most of the kitchen work. So we, we play on our strengths as far as that goes. My husband can game or watch football and fold clothes at the same oh, wow. time. So we figured out a good system at our house. So what's his title? facilitator Ooh. at a yeah he's a facilitator for walmart academy i like that yeah um are your kids willing or interested in going down the same path that you went no yeah <laughs> i'll just say it out right <laughs> i have a 25 year old daughter and despite heavy influence of a career in technology and how wonderful it could be, mm -hmm. she pursued a degree in television production and writing. And she's wow. a television producer in Los Angeles right now. That's awesome. So a completely different career path. But I, um, she just told me last week, actually, that she brags about my story yeah. of going back to school and going into technology and how su successful I've been with my career a lot. And that meant a lot to me right. that she saw my ability to – to um, retake on, you know, what I needed to accomplish and, and get that done. And so I have a 12 year old as well. Mm -hmm. And she really wants to follow in the footsteps of her sister because really? right now her sister is just about her entire world. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's exciting. But I'm going to still cameras. continue to, you know, hey, you want to go to Girls Who Code? Yeah. Women in tech. Women in tech. Yeah. yeah. Job shadow. I do. So what's next for you? Well, right now I am actually pursuing my bachelor's degree. Since okay. I talked earlier about the fact that I only have an associate's degree, I am pursuing a bachelor's degree in integrative studies okay. with a heavy focus on organizational psychology. Um, this has become a passionate of mine, passion yeah. of mine. So just corporate culture in general. Mm -hmm. um, we've gone through a lot of change at State Farm over the last couple of years, and influencing change and motivating people through change. Um, is something that I've become really passionate about. So it's something I wanted to learn a lot about. Um, I still see myself in a career in technology at State Farm all the way through retirement. Wow. And yeah, I don't anticipate leaving. I have a, a real um, dedication to State Farm. I really love the environment there. It feels like a family to me. Mm -hmm. And so I continue to see that career continue but I also look forward to bringing some of those strengths that I have in a relationship uh, perspective and from a culture perspective and just continuing to use those strengths in other ways at State Farm. It really makes it a good place to go to work to when I yeah. know that not only am I driving really influential technology advancements, but I'm also willing, I'm also able to give back to my community mm -hmm. in um, relationships and community just through our ERGs and other community involvement like with WIT and we formed when in five years ago when we partnered with WIT, I started a group so that those young millennial women who we were bringing in, we formed a committee so that they could kind of take on all the work that we were going to partner with WIT on. So it gives them something to focus on, too, and a way to give back and also advance technology at State Farm. So you have a lot of exciting things going on. Well, I see you at WIC Connect on June 20th. I will be there. Yay. So, yeah, State Farm is the VIP sponsor. And so we'll be there. We'll, we started from one five years ago in me, and now we will have 20 people there. Wow. Yeah. And so VIP sponsorship. So we've gone from one seat to VIP sponsorship. We're also heavily involved in Women of the Year Awards. And in November. In November. Yeah. 
So we will we will definitely be there. That's a, been a great partnership for us. It's definitely um, been one of the things that I've loved about it. So yeah. knowing my background of going from zero women basically mm-hmm. into we're definitely meeting the need, those needs of we have a lot of women at State yeah. Farm now. Well, thank you so much for being here, Robin Lloyd and Penny Collins. Um, we have a lot of great things coming up. The women's event in November with Connect on June 20th. Um, yeah. So you guys be on the lookout for that. This is Sanjay Ture for the Women in Technology Series here at BRS. <laughs>